welcome everyone. And uh, if you can turn on turn on your video and let's uh, let's let, let us see you, that would be great. <laughs> let's meet. Let's meet. Let's Jessica. encouraged, but not enforced. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, we've got a lot of people here today. Um, I'm. It's like three pages on my screen at the moment. <laughs> 还有我们有很多、wow. 看到我们有很多的好朋友， wow. 李娟老师，<笑>然后李娟老师也亲自来加入我们。Thank you so much. Um, uh, so this is kind of Guanghua tradition to not start um with a with a speech. We always start with some something lightly, maybe a music. So let's let me play some music for you. One second. Okay. It's part of a kind of old school music today. <laughs> Maybe I'm too young for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.、Um, I know this song, but、uh, yeah, it's kind of like maybe from my mom. <laughs> so this song, this song is called、uh, "Why Are Flowers So Red?" Why are flowers so red? It came from a 1960s like Chinese spy movie,、uh, "Visitors on the Icy Mountain."、Uh, the film was set in Xinjiang, and the, at the time, it achieved huge success because of its strong local features. Um, today we are also introducing you an author, also very with a very strong and unique personal style. Li Juan, so Li Juan 老师 is also here with us. Let's let's applaud <laughs> virtually. Yeah, 谢谢谢谢李娟老师抽出时间来参加我们这个活动。嗯、uh, ，然后嗯，李、uh, 娟 ，let me just introduce you, Li Juan, in English a little bit. Ah,、uh, she was born. Um, uh, Li Juan, Li Juan's many of her works were published. Ah,、uh, so far have also set their scenes exclusively in Xinjiang. She was born in Xinjiang in 1979, and after graduating from high school, she learned to sew and run a small convenience store with her mother, living in a town in the Altai Mountains where the nomads shopped. She started her writing career in 1999. So today we're going to talk about two of her books. Two of her books. One is、uh, "Distant Sunflower Fields." Let me just show you this book. And、uh, winter pasture.、Uh, the previous this book,、uh, the, the distant sunflower fields, is an、uh, essay collection that documented the family's effort to grow six acres of sunflowers in a very harsh and barren Gobi Desert. So this book is published by Sinoist Books and translated by Christopher Payne. And we had the very pleasure today to have the managing director of Sin. I was ACA Publishing, um, Yin, and the marketing director Daniel joining us. Hello. Hi there. Hi there. Hi.、Uh, <laughs> would, uh, would Daniel, uh, could I ask you to tell us about a little bit about Sinoist Books?、Uh, Why do you have this imprint? Thank you very much for the very kind intro there.、Um, yeah. So Sinoist Books were an imprint of ACA Publishing. We're a fiction-focused imprint of ACA Publishing. 
And our mission really is to bring some of the best writing coming out of China, the most best winning, uh, award-winning writing coming out of China to bring them to the English market. And uh, we partner with some very reputable translators and we try to kind of um, bring kind of a, a, a less told side of China out to an English speaking audience. And yeah, that's pretty much us in a nutshell. I'll keep it short and sweet because the, the after events are the, the stuff coming after this is much more interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction. And also another book today we are going to talk about is Winter Pasture. Uh, the, in winter pasture, uh, Li, uh, uh, Li Juan followed a, like a Kazakh herder family and their livestock to pasture for the winter. A very unique experience indeed. Uh, the book is published by Astro House and translated by Jack Hargreaves and Yan Yan. Uh, first of all, allow me to introduce Xinran Lao Shi. Xinran. Please. Hello. Xinran. Xinran, yes, not Lao Shi, Xinran only. <laughs> Yeah, she's the acclaimed British Chinese journalist, broadcaster, and author. And her first book, the book The Good Women of China, Zhong Guo Hao Nu Renmen, was a uh -huh. national best bestseller. She is considered an expert on the politics and the social dynamics regarding gender and sexuality within Chinese society. Her most recent book, The Promise. Love and the Loss in Modern China has been described as a crucial portrait of social change in China, depicting the ev evolution of modern China through an intensely personal lens. She um, continues to work with her charity, the Mother Bridge of Love, MBL, reaching out to adopted Chinese children across the world as a way of overcoming the gap between Chinese culture and adoptive culture, and ultimately aiming to bridge the huge poverty gap which exists in Chinese society. I also said, just mentioned that Jack Hagreeves is with, here, with us today, and he is a Chinese English translator from East Yorkshire who worked with Li Juan to translate Winter Pasture into English. Um, his work has pub, uh, his appear, has appeared in a, a simple journal, journal, Read Paper Republic, and LA Re Review of Books, China Channel. Recent and forthcoming translations of Jack include Yang Dian's flash fiction collection, A Contrarian's Tales, A History of Chinese Philosophical Thought by Zhang, Zhang Xianghao. And also another book uh, coming coming out soon is uh, Kan Jie by Chai Jin. So welcome both. So before I in, um, invite both of you to talk about uh, talk about Li Juan's works, um, Li Juan 老师 would you like to say something to us first? <laughs> Li Juan 老师，您能不能先跟我们这个中国和英国的读者打个招呼，说几句？<laughs> 这个英文版。向日葵地的读者，大家好，我是作者李娟。So she says hello everyone, um, the readers of the different sunflower fields. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's actually uh, Li Juan 老师 uh, very thoughtfully actually recorded a video, uh, talking about briefly about her works and her writing. And so now right now I'm just gonna sharing share this video. One second. 大家好，我是。来自中国新疆的作者李娟，嗯，很高兴能够在这里和大家一起做文学方面的探讨。出版方希望我谈论一下关于在中国文化边缘的西部文化背景的创作独特性的话题。由于我不擅长演讲，就提前写了一份演讲稿，照着读。嗯。说到独特，如果说我的写作会被读者和评论家认为独特的话，我第一反应，嗯，会觉得应该是指创作题材方面的独特。我的文字大多是以我生活的地方为背景，荒野深处的贫瘠闭塞的村庄，古老的艰辛的游牧生产方式。少数民族的文化传统以及所面临的外部文化冲击，这些我所熟知的一切，对于
外面世界的人们来说，是遥远陌生而富于魅力的。但是再想想，可能也并不只是这样。我生活节奏的地方虽然偏远，从这里传向世界的声音也非常微小，但是为它发声的写作者也有不少，介绍这片大地和人群的文字也堆积如山。比起我来，他们中相当一部分，可可能更热衷于强调独特这种东西，他们更急于猎奇。我不认为这是正常的创作，也不觉得这种创作对于边缘写作群体有代表意义。因此，要谈论独特，应该从写作者本身谈起，从他的态度、他的事业、他的身份，诸如此此此类。这种探索对我来说异常艰巨。只好把这个话话题的范围缩小，只聊一下我们新疆近年来的嗯本土创作这一块首先谈一下我自己的写作。有一个已经过世的前辈，在很多年前对我有一个评论，大意是：李娟的作品有着明亮而非阴暗的底色，关于寂寞的诗有很多。而明亮爽朗之中的无边的寂寞，似乎还没有人写过。这应该是一个独创的境界。这个评论令当时的我好像重新认识了一遍寂寞这个东西，并且重新认识了一遍自己。我记得当时自己想写的，并不是寂寞，而是一段和陌生人。短暂相处的经历，那段经历对于年轻时的我有深刻的触动，却不明所以，也不知道写出来意义何在，却敏锐的捕捕捉了其中的美好与激情，欲罢不能。嗯，真的，我在写的时候并不知道我写的是什么，直到被读者指出。你写的是寂寞。这篇文章名字叫做《看我呃拉面的男人》。这篇文章写于将近快二十年了。<笑>我写作的，我最初写作就是这样懵然而混沌，凭借一点点表达天分，在文字世界里横冲直撞。但是运气很好，获得了许多前辈和读者的认同，才得以持续成长和改变。是的，是改变。我觉得我正是通过不断的改变，才渐渐成为现在的自己。通过不断的否定自己、克服自己，永不改变是勇气和能力的体现。但是，勇于改变。同样也来自可贵的勇气和能力，还有自信。我有许多不自信的地方，但这方面实在是很自信。还有很多，<咳>还有很多读者认为我的写作非常节制，认为我的视野是向外部敞开的，少有自我痕迹，比如说，少有性别痕迹。总是会令一些阅读时，总是会令一些人阅读时忽略我的女性身份。可事实上，目前为止，我的所有文字都是围绕我的个人经历<咳>展开，并且只与个人观察、个人思考有关。如此个人化的写作，<咳>却带给读者相反的感受。只能解释为性格方面的原因，是我的性格让我不愿过多的暴露自己，可能也觉得自己大多数的时候实在不值一提吧。以上是我
，嗯，自己对于自己写作特点的一些判断，总结起来大致就是敞亮、开放、节制。然后再谈到我们新疆的作家群体，我觉得我们这里能够被广泛认可的作者，都有一个共同特点。文字擅长以小见大，他们很少寄托大事件、大视野而创作。相当一部分作者都热衷于炮制独特，强调差异的时候，他们却更专注于相同。此地的人们与世界上任何一个角落的人都相同的那一部分。相同的欢乐，相同的痛苦，相同的希望，这些讲述者们赋予耐心和希望，心态积极而宽容。同样，在他们笔下，哪怕是寂寞，也处于无边的明朗，也处于在无边的明朗爽朗、明亮爽朗之中。所以，这种寂寞并不是我的独创，而是西部作家。文字中的普遍存在。新疆的哈萨克女作家伊尔克西，她的作品和她本人一样敏感又温和。她以女性特有的柔弱与固执，关怀本民族的命运转折。新疆作家周涛，语言华美而从容，她总是能将种种纠结、复杂的人的情感。处理的通透而诗意。还有新疆作家刘亮程，他以对各种平凡事物的描写打动读者。他总是从一只虫子、一一株草写起，在最最细微的角落里处理最强烈的感知。还有新疆作家董立博。他的魅力在于文字中对所有普通人的体谅和关怀。像开始所说的那样，为这样一个作家群体的创作特点溯源，是个巨大的课题。但是我还是觉得，归结于地域原因这个方向是没错的。于是又说回了最开始的判断。除去地域对创作内容的影响，更深刻的影响在于，他对作者本人，也许大概率下，面对什么样的世界，就会成为什么样的人。开阔、空旷、毫无遮蔽的生存场所，令世世代代生活在这里的人们敬畏天地和强者。接受自己的平凡，不愿过度沉湎自我情绪，而更关注外部世界，乐于歌颂与赞美。恶劣的气候、贫瘠的土地、艰辛的生活现实，令人们吐气无效的悲哀，而崇尚积极乐观的生活态度。地广人稀，令人们重视人口数量。依赖互助关系，易于信任陌生人，易于包容外来文化，而落后的交通、闭塞的信息通道，又以又令人们很难走出惯性，很难走出传统惯性。对于未来，心态矛盾，不安而又期待。中国有句老话：“一方水土养一方人。”从这样的人群中走出来的作家，也一定会打有相关烙印。这就是我的一个粗暴的总结，其实也算不上是什么独特的观点。谢谢大家。嗯，谢谢李娟老师，谢谢非常精彩的分享。<笑> Thank you for for such a, such a In um uh, so, uh such insightful sharing um uh I also felt like uh, I I was a big fan of your writing and I felt that your writing is 
very beautiful, and I, you are very good at turning something really plain into something very interesting. So I often refer your writing as like a magical wand <laughs> that you will just point to something and you write about something really ordinary, but you will turn that into turn that description into something very unique. Um, uh, so Xinran Laoshi, Xinran, um, you must be um, a good friend of uh, Li Juan Laoshi. I wish. I wish. <laughs> have you I'm read? <laughs> have you read her, her works? Experience in such a wasteland that really encouraged me to write to represent some voices of Chinese women who are left behind in some hidden corner or uh, because for many people for many countries we talk about the great numbers of the great achievements but I believe history being made all of us in different colors in different levels so even the people in the very small percentage of the society that is the hundred percent of the human being their lives their father, uh, the family, and to themselves. So today I prepared um, this PPT to talk about my feeling about this uh, Jen's book. Uh, if I could have this uh, poster of this uh, screen. I have allowed you to share your screen. Okay. Yeah. You see that? Yes, you can see it. That's fine. Okay. So the first page, the because I want to thanks to um, Guanghua Shu I want to thanks to the Thank publisher, um, Guan Shu, um, because they have been tried so hard to represent the Chinese writers from in the door of China and to the rest of the world. So I'm the volunteer for them and for my charity and for each single Chinese writer. Well, if anyone need me, need a BL or charity, please give a call and we'll follow your plan and we'll try our best. And also, I really want to thank Li Jian Shi. I hope in the future I can contribute a little bit uh, to your voices to be heard in the rest of the world. What I got, uh, I feel about Li Jian's book. Since I read her first book, a second book, I realized something so familiar with the book I read since I moved to UK in 1997. That was uh, uh, and now Sheffield. Why I think um, they are very similar or something very touched. So maybe not many people know five pound notes. Uh, since 2016, that is the lady and the uh, Scottish writer on the note. That is uh, Nan Sheffield. Yeah. Why I thought or still believe they are very similar to each other, I want to show you from my research the both. Okay. So you see, sorry, and this is a this page made me very proud of uh, my country. You see, when people talking about China, I think they thought, many people thought China is just village. Now we can see China is almost the same size as Europe without Russia, okay? Then Yi Jian was grabbed in her book talk about Northwest China in this area. And uh, None perfect. Her book is to talk about North Scotland life. Actually, it's about the mountain, mountain called <clears throat> Ken, Ken Dom Mountain. Mountain. So, in this uh, perfect here in North UK and in the Scotland, it's around the mountain area. Li Juan's life, the, her book talk about in Northwest China is here. So from the landscape, we can see how similar they come from. Like Li Juan just mentioned, 
方水土到一方人。So you can see this both lady, they come from so similar landscape. From North Scotland and the Northwest China in Xinjiang in the mountain area as well. And uh, but he just, when, and when Nan Sheffield passed away in 1981, Li Jun was only less than what, two years old. So Li Jun writing, in my understanding or in my heart, is something like the continuing woman's uh, life or telling the story of uh, Nan's, uh, Nan Sheffield. And uh, on my research between these two ladies, I found very interesting about their writing on the wildlife. Now in Sheffield, because she walked around this mountain a lot, so she wrote a book called The Living Mountain. So you can see and the wildlife from her writing and from a landscape, trees, animals, people's living around. And Yi Jun's life writing is about her own experience and her grandma and her mother and the three women, three generations, how they fight in this kind of waste land or unfarmed land and survive as well. So when I did the research, even found an almost a similar picture between their lives. So on the left side, that is from North Scotland and from this mountain area, is uh, Pantong Mountain area's life. And this is Li Jun's um, um, life uh, environment. You see, even the kids have a uh, holding different animals, the happiness and this kind of cue. I'm really touched by those kind of stories. Well, that's a long story and tell in the short way. So the books of these two ladies, you can see Nan uh, Sheffield, she wrote the book, uh, Living Mountain. I love that very much. In Chinese, it should be Huoshan. Or Li Jun wrote quite a lot. And this, especially, I love this kind of, you know, before was what? Uh, I Tai is the mountain area I'm talking about it's here. And uh, back to, you can see the landscape and you can see the location. Okay, the location is uh, this area and the landscape is like this. So lifestyle is like that. So that is in their books. So today, I think that the publisher or bookstore or readers uh, get attention and interesting about the events the book and publish it in English. They call the distance a sunfield, a sunflower field. And in Chinese, what the Yao Yuan, uh, uh, So in those pictures, you can see how Li Yuan's mother, grandmother, and herself start planting, planting the Xiang the sunflower in this such a unfarmed land. Then they start from a very basic, almost no condition, they living in this kind of hole in the mountains. Actually, I've been traveling in that area a few times, the uh, first time in 1980s. And when people show me around their living condition, I couldn't believe that actually they dig the hole and the, in the underground, in the ground, and the, to avoid sunstorm. Sunstorm, they are very powerful. They could have lost your direction, lost anything even covered by sun for the night. So the Jun's family story, a particularly this book story, is talk about three women, how they survive in that kind of landscape. Then you will see they, after three times, um, they lost everything again. Finally, 
they have their <clears throat> own sunflower field successfully. I was very, very touched by the story because of my specialist since the 1980s on Chinese women's life. And I've been interviewed over 380 Chinese women face to face. I wish I could met Yuan and her mom. I was very, very touched by the way Yuan telling the story. So lively. And just like someone vivid tell you her own life with a soul, with a feeling, with a love, and with a kind of very strong fighting to those unexpected natural condition or maybe something in life. So that is my story, my feeling about Li Jian's book. Thank you so much, Xinran. Thank you for the sharing. Um, I wonder um, when you're, you're reading the, the Li Juan's book, is there any sort of um, chapter or sentence that touched you most? Has, has there any been any, this kind of moment that kind of struck you? Yeah, that was when I read uh, this uh, chapter 28 in the page is uh, uh, once. Five, you know, five, that, five. Chapter called, yeah, that chapter called uh, an unfamiliar mm. place. Yeah. So when I just started reading, I didn't read the Chinese, but when I read English, I think because the language can give you quite a different, even the same uh, story, and the language gave you something else, open you, our language open you thinking. So I can see the picture which it never had before is about her mother want to kind of freedom and want to kind of uh, how do you say maybe she, without knowing that and she want to prove herself because no one believes that land and plant anything is no water or, you know, this is why they left Japan. The, her mother, the Jen's mother said, no, I want to do it. And uh, then this, she had her ox and uh, her own mom and then her, you know, tours, everything. That is called, Li Jen called her, his mom's army. Yeah. And again, when she started, you can see she was in her she was in herself strongly. Also, I love that story. And her mom felt kind of kind of the freedom, and she worked hard in the farm, completely naked. Yes. I admire because of a woman we never had this kind of freedom in the outside of the door. You know, sometimes even in the door. <laughs> when I saw the picture, when I saw. I was very moved by that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I found that very interesting as well. And uh, in the earlier chapter of this book, there's also a paragraph talking about how her mom- Many, was, many, many yes, chapters, almost every chapter. Every so chapter was talking it. about the mom. And the mom is a very, a, a very iron will, sort of like a, a, a special, have a very special personality. And, so and many Chinese women. Yeah, you read that story. Yeah, I have to say, you understand why China survived from almost a hundred years, civil war, warlords war, and political killings, and just stand up again in forty years time. Mm -hmm. It's not just political or leaders mm -hmm. only. And I think it's about Chinese mothers. Definitely, no question. And I'm sure you cover the, the quality of Chinese women a lot in your book, The Good Women of China, as well. Compared to Li Jian, no, I'm, I'm just a very small student. I will learn from her, yeah. Very modest. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 uh, I know that there are lots of people here speaking Chinese. Um, I just would like to explain a little bit to Li Juan Lao as well. Uh, Xin Ran Lao Shi and I are just talking about. We just 刚才在说，就是说，在您的作品里面有，特别是这个
呃，要为你的向日葵第一这部作品里面有特别多的这个对于呃您的母亲的这个形象的这个描写，然后我们都觉得非常非常的有意思。您的这个母亲的，您对这个母亲的这个这个女性形象的描写是非常特别的，非常深入人心的。所以欣然老师作为一个写也也非常一个非非常善于书写中国女性题材的作家，她在这边也是。分享能给他解释一下这个图片吗？我能给他解释一下。可以，可以，可以，可以。嗯，哎，快快的一分钟，李坚老师啊，嗯，对您的作品呢，我不仅是感动，而且做了一个小小的调研。我发现您的作品，苏格兰的一位作家，就是在英国英镑，苏格兰呢，他们有自己这个田地。那么在二零一六年，他们选了一位英国的女性作家。这个作家呢叫 Nan s h e r f i e l d 他现在呢在二零一六年就被放入了苏格兰的五英镑的这个面壁上，所以可见他的这个受尊敬程度。那么我觉得您的写作呢，跟他很类似，而且呢，可能是因为我是中国人，所以我觉得您比他写的更鲜活、更细腻，而且更有人的情感。那么。这个 Nan s h e r f i e l d 呢，他写的是苏英国在北部有一座山，这座这座山的名字呢就是安德姆山，中文上可以这样说。那么您呢，我做了一个对照。那么他写作的这山的这个生存环境呢，就是我刚才做的这个比较，就是他写的生存环境。那么这是您写的您的这个生存环境。那么接下来呢，他更多谈的是。这个山上的这些，呃，生物啊，植物呀，以及很少谈及就是人们的生活。而您呢，谈及的更多呢是家庭的这种经历。但是呢，很出奇的是什么？就是当我搜索呃这些地区相同的这个图，呃，这个地区的时候，我发现了很多相同的图片，很感人。那这是他的书和您的书对应的一些介绍。那么最后一个呢？是关于您的书的英文版的一些介绍，谢谢您，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢欣然。So Jack, you've translated the Winter Pasture, 冬牧场啊、uh, into English. How did that go? Was it a challenging journey? So yeah, I translated, um, well, co-translated Winter Pasture with Yan Yan. So. Because we've only met the once via screen, this being the second time, I only know as much about Li Juan as I can find in her books,、um, and the the kind of the only unique individual perspective I can present is that I have the experience of translating her. So I'm going to go at this talk from that angle、um, and give you some challenges.、Um, Vivian offering the beautiful segue there.、Um, And there's there's kind of three or four that I'm going to go at it from, and hopefully there'll be you'll have some insights into、um, Li Juan's a little bit more into the narrative and the the themes and the stories behind at least Winter Pasture. Although there is a lot of overlap between the between Winter Pasture and Distant Sunflower Fields,、mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to stick mainly to English. So I'm sorry to all of Li Juan's fans who are on from China at the moment, but it's Saturday morning and I haven't had any coffee yet. And it would, I would, I would only come out, looking terrible. I would come out looking terrible、um, if I tried Chinese for that for that long. Anywho,、um, okay.、Uh, so starting off with some common phrases that were very difficult.、Yeah. I mean, Chinese. One of the things, one of the challenges translating Chinese into English is Chinese is really generous with repetition. Um, and repetition in language is absolutely fine and often works really well.、Um, has a lot of rhythmic benefits and also thematic benefits in terms of like emphasizing certain ideas. In English, it's grating on the ears, as you all know.、Um, so there are a few words that come up a lot. Key words that we had to decide, Yen Yen and I had to decide how to translate、um, because they really cite people in a situation in the setting. And also give people a really clear idea of what's going on. And the two words I've chosen are to go over, so to keep this relatively quick, is Huangye、uh, and Jijing,、um, which I will put in the chat for y'all to see.、Uh, 
Oh, and I put in Ji Mo as well because um, Li Juan Lao Shi um, mentioned that word, and that very much um, cognate with um, Ji Jing. So Huang Ye meaning kind of wilderness or the wild. So this is how Li Juan describes her setting, um, the setting where she is, which is the winter pastures, which is in winter pasture, it's the area from the Alunga River in the Altai, Va in the Altai region of Xinjiang province in the northwest of China. And it stretches down to the Tianshan, to Tianshan, to the heavenly mountains. And so this is vast swathe of land. Um, and that's the winter pasture. And then further north than that, there's the, what comes after winter? Spring pasture, uh, the autumn pasture, further north than that, the spring pasture, further north than that, the summer pasture. Um, and, uh, because they're chasing, they're kind of making sure that they're not freezing as they get further south, but also they are putting themselves, the nomadic Kazakh people I'm speaking about, in an area where there, it's cold enough for there to be snow, which is the only source of water while out in these wilderness or these, the, these wilds. Um, so in the word Huangye, there is a sense of the ye means wild. The Huang means kind of desolate and barren. So you get an idea of what this place is like from that word. Um, as for Ji Jing, um, silence, quiet. Um, this was the word that really represented quite a few um, challenges because it comes up a lot. And someone put in a chat another Chinese word as well, that same meaning. I think they put jimu uh, and there's jimua. And these words are repeated over and over because it's silence, quiet, stillness um, is really much of the experience while in Xinjiang, um, at least as this book, someone has just asked, Annie, Annie has just asked, have you ever been to Xinjiang? No. So all of, these, all of this experience that I'm relating to is indirect via the book. So this is what I've um, gleaned from it. Um, but so it was a challenge translating that word because we couldn't just keep putting silence. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to go into the, the discussions of kind of what we came up with and all of the various ways we, uh, we rewrote it. Um, so you're not necessarily swashbuckling, Li Juan. So I don't know how to say swashbuckling in Chinese. I wish I could. <laughs> That's a phrase I can't pull off the top of my head. Um, and for me, compar there were the comparisons that kind of maybe fit a little bit more. For readers of Chinese, there is um, Liu Liangcheng, who Li Juan mentioned, um, who a village of one in particular, Yigeren, the Chunzhuang, um, where he also lives in Xinjiang, and he writes a lot about the nature there, um, and he includes a lot of animism in the work. Um, in the same way as Li Duan does, there's a beautiful passage in Winter Pasture where Li Duan, very bored, is walking out into the wilderness and is finding things to do and she's collecting pebbles and then she's following the tracks of the various little critters um, in the snow and in the sand. Um, and she's creating stories for these little critters as they weave their way between um, their various burrows or holes in the ground. Um, and she's building the inner world up of these animals. And Li, uh, Liu Liangcheng very much does this as well. Um, and then there's another book. Um, oh, so this is for English readers um, by Gretel Ehrlich um, from Daunt Books, uh, which was recently republished. I actually read this book to try and get a little bit of the voice of Li Juan um, in my head while doing the translation. Uh, the book is called The Solace of Open Spaces. Um, I will put it in the chat. And this is about a farmer, again, in kind of these vast lands, no one around, very quiet life, describing their inner feelings there, describing these this, these big open spaces and how that makes you feel within them, whether it be admiration of the sublime or whether it be very humbling and make you feel, you know, insignificant. Um, there's a lot of overlaps there. Yes, the solace of open space, someone just put. Um, okay, next one. Sorry, I feel like I'm, I'm rushing through things here. Um, third 
kind of challenge um, in winter pasture was, um, so Lidran in winter pasture spends, and I know this was a little bit of, uh, um, was a little bit the case for Christopher as well in his translation, but not quite as much, um, but he still had to, he still had a little, to do this a little bit. Um, because Lidran spends the winter with the Kazakhs and because she's in a Kazakh Chinese area, this conflux of this, this area where these two cultures converge, um, there is a lot of Kazakh that Lidran has transliterated into Chinese. So we had to transliterate that back into English and not knowing any Kazakh that makes it impossible for me. Um, so I, um, commissioned the help of a Chinese to a Kazakh translator um, called Altimbek Gula, who's credited in the in the translator's note in the front of the book. And he went through and helped give all of the names of the characters and the places um, their Romanized form. Um, and I'll read some of these names to you and I'll give you a brief description of these characters um, and give you an idea of the host of characters that Lidran features in this book. Um, and a very similar thing happens in Distant Sunflower Fields too, um, where it's not just, you'll see in a minute, it's not just the humans who are these characters and who we had, whose names we had to translate. Um, there's, there are many other characters. Um, so there's Tuma or Kuma, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, who is the often drunk, but mostly responsible father. Although I think that's description's a little bit questionable he could we could probably give him a harder time than that he's a he's quite abusive really um sister-in-law um who is um which in kazakh is jengatai uh, which we ended up not using in the book um but i think is still in the glossary who is a paragon of decorum book by li juan which is often something that happens in in chinese and in kazakh as well um karma who's their teenage daughter who has the burden of kind of carrying on the family tradition of herding on, she has it on her shoulders, but yet she dreams of going to college and she, she dreams of, of living a life with people her age um, and going and, and living in this inner city, um, perhaps leading a more modern existence than the, the, that of her family and their forefathers. Um, there's Jada, the son who's off at school, who dreams of being a mechanic and of fixing computers, who's very capable, always eager to prove himself, feisty. Um, and he uh, is maybe living out the dream that Karma would like to live out of being able to go to school and not necessarily carry on the family tradition. There are the neighbors, Shinshibek, Saina, Kalagash, Ramathan and Nursalash, who's also called Nurgun throughout the book. No idea if I'm pronouncing any of those correctly. Apologies to anyone who speaks Kazakh. Um, there's Kurmash, the brother of uh, Shinshibek, who is flighty. He's not very present. He's a shadow whose music from his phone that he's always playing is the first thing you hear and you never see him. Um, very retiring. And then there are the animals um, who get a big feature, like in some distant sunflower fields. There's Plum Blossom so named because of the pink and red dots spray painted on the cat by, as I said, the very abusive Tuma. Um, Panda Dog, um, who is the dog there who has puppies and who um, has to battle against this very harsh, um, these very harsh elements in order, in order to live as a dog with not much food. Um, and then there are all of the livestock, the cows, the camels, the sheep, the goats, the horses, some of them named like the patch-faced bull calf and young pioneer, many of them without a face really, but yes. their per Lidran um, brings out their personalities throughout the book and really I wish she brought, she's gone. describes I... their inner life um, in lots of detail um, in a very evocative way. Um, her mum, who features only indirectly in this, um, is a big feature in Distant Sunflower Fields. And I saw that some people in the comments were saying how much they love um, Lidran's descriptions of her mum and how she portrays her mum in Distant Sunflower Fields. Um, and she does, it's, 
it's a very wonderful and yeah, uh, vivid um, portrayal. Yeah, young someone laughed at Young Pioneer a second ago. Young Pioneer is so named. He's a, Young Pioneer is a goat with a little red um, bandana wrapped around its neck, um, like the Young Pioneers of like the Communist Party. I guess like the maybe in England like the Scouts or the Beavers, like that kind of equivalent. Um, and so she's the goat is called Young Pioneer throughout. Um, so yeah, it was difficult translating all of the names and the place names and the culturally specific Kazakh things. Um, but even though there is that kind of foreignness, um, you know, especially as readers as well, it, within the book, you encounter that foreignness because you're count encountering these words that you're not familiar with um, and these phrases that you're not familiar with and all, all these phrases you're not familiar with and all of these descriptions of various types of textiles um, that they have in Kazakh culture, like um, the surmak and the tekemet. Um, and while described in the glossary, you know, it may be hard to picture them just reading the words themselves, but Li Juan does a beautiful job of citing you in the setting and bringing you into the room. Um, so there's just a few passages that I want to read very quickly. Um, Vivian asked me to pick out some of my favorite pieces from the book. Yes, and I, I, I absolutely love the dynamics here because we've got so many Legion fans and they know exactly what you're talking about and they want to think, they think, oh, that's funny, that's the character I love. And I like this kind of energy here in our talks. Yes, please go ahead. Cool, thank you. Um, so there's, there's, I picked out three, oh, no, I picked out two. Um, and they also speak a little bit to a, a point that I briefly want to make and then I'll, I'll shut up. Um, and let you all go on with your Saturdays. Um, so two relatively similar scenes um, that I think really cite you, like put you in the setting of the Winterboro. Now briefly to describe the Winterboro, the Winterboro is a hole dug two meters deep in the ground in the winter pastures. Um, and it's covered over with straw and sticks and then covered over with mud um for the ceiling and the roof and the kazakh herders during the winter live in this um burrow it, in fact it's not just only mud it's made also of sheep manure um, and the reason they live in this burrow and a specific reason why it's made with sheep manure is because of what she describes as its magical quality of keeping heat and, and kicking out heat constantly. So in the very cold, harsh winters, um, they spend a lot of very quiet moments within this winter burrow. So this is one pasture, uh, one pasture, one passage. Um, on another of those evenings beneath a perfectly round moon, a great southwestern gale filled the world with howls and hisses. But beneath the earth, it was as quiet as the bottom of the ocean except for the occasional flapping sound made by the flimsy plastic covering the higher window. Kumar drank his tea in silence. During those in-between moments when she wasn't serving tea, sister-in-law embroidered. Jada stared at his phone. Then the door opened and Karma came lumbering in, holding an unweaned calf across her waist. Those moments profoundly triggered my curiosity. I wanted to know everything but I didn't know where to start. I was only an outsider. And then there's one more paragraph from a different area of the book, much later on. Inside the dark burrow, a single shaft of light beamed through the only window. The sight of Ramathan planting little kisses on the baby's bottom the sight of brother and sister discussing the changing of the baby's diaper, son holding on to father as he cuts strips of cowhide, the two slipping in and out of song together. The little, the little girl, Nurgun, squatting with dripping wet hair beside the stove, washing clothes. These scenes moved me immensely, but I didn't dare to photograph them for fear of disturbing them. 
So I really love both of these scenes. Um, and I, they both give a similar voice of Lee Joanne's, though I said she's got many. Um, and, but one of the main reasons I love both of these scenes is because they talk to something that Lee Joanne herself has talked about, um, specifically about um, Yerkex Hrumanbek, which is who is a, a Kazakh author um, who Lee Joanne mentioned, um, and something that Yerkex said about Lee Joanne, um, and which is specifically that Lee Joanne is Han Chinese. And while she's visiting the winter pastures, and while she's living with the Kazakh herders, she is always going to be Han Chinese and she's always going to be looking in from the outside. Um, and so while throughout this book, and while Lidra never claims to be an anthropologist, um, while there is a lot about the Kazakh herders and there is a lot that you learn about life as a herder in the harsh winters, um, there is a, a lot that you also learn about Li Juan's inner world, um, because wherever you go, you take yourself with you. Um, and there, in that sense, you, while you are an observer as well, reading this book um, of the Kazakhs, you are also an observer of kind of Li Juan's personality. Um, so it's, I guess what I'm, the point I'm trying to make with that is, um, There is a lot contained in this story within a very, very quiet part of the world where it might feel like not much is happening. Um, and there's a lot of power that Li Juan has been able to pull out of um, and like summon from um, these lands and her experiences, um, both in Winter Pastor, I think. Um, and I hope we've been able to capture that in the English um, and in distant sunflower fields. And I feel like Christopher has been able to capture that in, in his English rendition of, of that book. Um, yeah, that's that's me, I think. There is more, but I'm, I'm going on. Thank so. you so much, Jack. I love the la your last summary. That's kind of the power of the quietness. And in the Li Liang, that's something that is hidden, but that is hidden under the surface. I love that. This is how I, felt about Li Juan's work as well. Um, I, we, we, we look forward to seeing your translation. It's uh, published by American publishing company and uh, uh, it's freshly out this month. So both Li Juan's works have, have come out in this February. So please do make sure you buy the books and read them. Can um, I, can um, I quickly commit a publicity faux pas? Um, I'm just gonna drop, in case you want to know any more about Winter Pasture, um, I'm gonna drop a bunch Definitely. of reviews in the chat. Um, so go and enjoy. And Nikki Harmon is here as well. One of her reviews of both Distant Sunflower Fields and Winter Pasture is, is in there. So you can find out more about the books if yeah. you like. Well, uh, as a as a uh, the Chinese bookshop in London, we are still trying to stock the winter pasture because uh, it's a published in America, and we are still trying to find a distributor. Um, but distant sunflower fields is actually already available in our online bookshop at the moment. So after the event, I will send a message to everyone for you to give you the purchase link. Um. Uh, uh, I want. I have a, a very good friend here. Uh, I think it's a uh, Bai Xianping Lao Shi. Uh, she's um, she's leading the. Uh, she's organized a very large uh, uh, London re uh, book reading cl club in London, and uh, organize uh, gathering a lot of Chinese people who love books. And she is a big fan of Li Juan. I believe she shared a link earlier on in our chat. If you can see. Uh, about her one of her book the book reviews she wrote for Li Juan's Yang Dao Yang Dao the tri trilogy uh, Yang Dao trilogy um this is another book about uh, uh, this is her other book that maybe needs to be translated in the future <laughs> um so, uh, <coughs> I'd like to uh, ask uh, Bai Lao Shi uh, like what is your favorite like after reading this um a distant sunflower fields after uh, reading it how like uh, what what is, what is your favorite part can you share with us yeah of course thank you thank you vivian and thank you for organizing this event for the fans of li Jian. and uh, can you hear me yes, yes we can hear you yeah okay 
Uh, and uh, I first heard about Li Juan is in a uh, gathering, you know, we, yeah, I'm from London Book Club and we have a monthly gathering and a member of the book club recommended the wind pasture. Yeah, uh, translated by, by the handsome boy. <laughs> and it was the first time Li Juan was introduced to my world. <laughs> and since then, Li Juan's work has been on the recommended list quite a few times. And uh, I have become a big fan of Li Juan. Look, it's only the paperbacks I have. And uh, I dare to say I have read every single copy of Li Juan's book in Chinese and uh, some in English. And I hope uh, more and more Li Juan's book can be translated into English to, yeah, as a window of Xinjiang. And the most recent one, of course, I have read is this one, is uh, Sunflower Fields. I bought this copy in airport bookshop and finished it in one seat. Yeah. And it's uh, still it has typical legends, fun, easy, passionate, and true to yourself style. And uh, among this book, they have lots of essays in it. And uh, my favorite one is, is called Yong Hong Gong She. I think in English it's called Forever at Commune. That is this one, this topic. And the term of Commune brings me back to my childhood. And uh, when I was about four, five, and we, I visited my grandma regularly, and she lived in a town, uh, a commune. And and uh, I, it reminded me of the old time. And I was moved and I was tearful when I read this piece of, of writing. It's so beautiful. Uh, and uh, as I would pick up two, two details, as I think it is, it's, it's so wonderful. And the first, first one is, in the bus station, in the transport station, and Li Juan wrote, I read it in Chinese. Uh, 在这个客运站, 我买到了一张二十年前才盛行的那种旧式车票, 售票员在车票的空牌处写下时间, 车次等信息, 再把票从票根处撕下来给我, 他撕的那一瞬间, 我担心这一切会突然消失。我持票看了好一会儿，觉得往下即将踏上的是一段时光的旅程。I uh, remember this detail when I was very little, and the tickets was sold like that, and the ticket office would write every uh, every single detail about uh, about your journey on the paper, and then give it to you. It's, it's, uh, uh, just from the 20 years ago to today. And uh, this tickets, this writing just uh, turn on the time machine. And like passengers would go through the past 20 years time again, go through every detail, every development detail every year. Uh, it's a very true feeling and I can put me into the into the context. Um, I at that time I read this sentence, I feel oh oh my God, I would like to go to go to Yong Hong Gong She to go to the bus stop to buy these tickets again just to get the feeling. And this is one. And another, another one I would pick is the end of this Yong Hong Gong She. It says, uh, 柏油路又破又旧, 到处大坑小坑, 
，车在路面上绕来绕去，东摇西晃，呃，走得慢慢吞吞。And it's very important. It's the last sentence. 车上的乘客都默默无言，同我一起跟在全世界的最后面。嗯、uh,。I I I kind of not completely agree with the translation. Um, I don't have the version. Maybe Vivian can show us later. And it says, I think it means 跟在全世界的后面 It means we follow the whole wild world. Yeah, the、uh, translation said it's we were all lost to our thoughts in this place at the end of the world. Yeah,、mm -hmm. I. In in my opinion, I think it's not only because Yonghong Gongshe is、uh, is remotely located at the at the end of the world, remoted on the really far away of Xinjiang. Even in Xinjiang, it's a far away place. But also, it says the place the Yonghong Gongshe stays at twenty years ago. As if, as if that place was forgotten by the time. It stayed in twenty years ago, and from there, Li Juan started a journey go to the modern society. It not only by distance, but by the developments. It's a it's a quite mixed feeling, and that could could not describe in thousand words, but Li Juan. Delivered it in twenty Chinese characters. I think it's outstanding writing. Yeah, I, I, I would stop here, and I would like to thank you, thank you, Li Juan, for your beautiful, inspiring writing, and your work has brought me and my friends enormous pleasure. And we discuss your books in our book club many times. Thank you. And we, not only me, but my, but our book club members, wish you a happy life, and enjoy your writing. We looking forward to your new books. Uh, Ben 老师，您要不要把最后那段话给给李娟老师翻译一下？哈哈哈哈哈！啊，那个李娟，那个那个那个，谢谢李娟老师，谢谢你这么美好的文字。呃，你带给我和我们读书会成员很多阅读的快乐，非常感谢你。今天有机会当面跟你说这句话，我觉得非常荣幸。那么我呢，在读你的《走夜路，请放声歌唱》的那那本书的时候，我是在微信读书上看的。我当时留了一个言，我找出来，呃，是我目前为止在微信读书上评论获得点赞最多的一个。一个留言，我当时怎么写的呢？我当时写的是：“李娟姑娘，愿你幸福，哪怕你从此弃笔，我更愿意你有了庸常的喜乐人生。”那么这是评论哪段话呢？评论你写的一句话说：“多年后他娶我为妻，我们衣衫破旧，容颜不变，仿佛一切天生如此。”我是评论的这句话。那么我。愿你幸福，我愿你享受你的，享受你的写作，希望你带给我们更多的美好的文字。谢谢白老师，说的特别感人，必须得给鼓掌，必须点赞。对对对。<笑>其实我有点，我想 ，I wonder, I want to ask all the English audience a question. Do you know what commune is? What do you know that what Gongshe the Forever Red Commune that commune do you know what that is? Do you, you Li Jun 老师能不能给我们解释一下什么是公社呀？是这样的，公社。Are you talking people? Yeah. So Jun, he is actually yeah. So I would like to Li Jun explain and I can briefly translate. Yeah. 您说，您说，李李老师，您说，在六十年代的时候，我们搞，哎呀，我现在解释可能不是很严谨，没关系，嗯，是一种嗯，农村的一种劳动
聚集形式，就是公有制的一种体现吧。所有人在一起劳动，在一起吃饭，嗯，就是一种公寓区的我们的一种对这个共产主义一种向往的这么一种最初的一种体现。但是这个，这种这种形式，嗯，维持几年就从全国就撤销了。但是公社这个词呢，就，嗯，成为我们边远地区的对乡村的一个代代言的一个一个代词，因为，因为在新疆是牧区，牧区的话，对乡村好像没有一个特别，嗯，传统的称称呼。从那以后，对乡村、对人人的呢，人人的聚集地都叫做公社。<laughs> see. Oh, well, I see. Oh, I don't know if I can do a good job translating. It's quite hard, actually. Uh, I think she said uh, um, it was originally just a, a format, um, a, a, like a people uh, where a kind of a community they build up where people think they can collaboratively working, collaboratively working together uh, as a way they work in a commu communist uh, community, uh, but of course um, that kind of idea uh, did not last very long. So after a few years, the the, the real idea of people working together towards uh, distributing their resources evenly, that that kind of format has disappeared. But because in Xinjiang, it's um, it's uh, it's it's traditionally already a farm, like a farmland. So there wasn't like a really as a clear distinction between city and countryside. So there was a <coughs> real concept of countryside. So therefore people like inherited the word commune to refer to the countryside. Um, so therefore in that uh, forever read commune, um, the context, in that context, the, com the commune actually refers to a, a village. Um, but the name is so old school and so communist and so back and like a backward. So that when people mention it, it feels that it's at the end of the world. I don't know if this but is- It's kind of a negative, like a negative sort of feeling. Yeah? A, well, yeah, well, I wouldn't say in China's context it's considered a negative. It's more of a, just a historical heritage because after all, we are still thinking we're in a socialist country. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we, we were not. It was just an. It was just a um, a, um, a a sort of community that kind of a, the way the how it works didn't kind of work out. Yeah. <laughs> Is there different levels of commune? Do you think? That's what I wonder. If there's different levels of it, like a, you know, the actual yes. word, I think there is because I was brought up in quite a close in London, but quite close community um, where we did um, we did share things and do things and like, you know, our neighbours, we was always knocking on each other's doors and stuff. And it was quite a community, but it's sort of commune, but it wasn't so organised as a commune as such, but right. it was still a sense of community, you know, it's uh, yes. so I think that can be a very positive thing. That's what I'm saying, not just a you know, a communist or, or sort of that sort of thing. But I think it happens everywhere, but in different levels, you know, different kind of levels. That's what I think. Commune, you know. Interesting. Uh, actually, this is the first time I've, I'm learning this concept as well. I've heard of this concept, but I I wasn't sure what it meant, actually. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there anybody in this today's group um, are over 60 plus? Only that, that <laughs> situation. <laughs> people can really understand yeah. what is yeah. Yen Gong She, you mm. know. For my, I, again, I, I'm not, I don't think it's, this is very anywhere close, very correctly. But uh, what I understood uh, from books, you know, from uh, my parents talking about it. It's um, uh, 人民公社 actually originally is coming from Russia, and they call it they call it um, they call it uh, 农庄, 人民, 人民, whatever 农庄, that well, obviously you know in Chinese it's translation anyway. So it's uh, that is basically because 
after uh, uh, we call it liberation, um, all the land belonged to everybody. Everybody shared the land. And that is in the early, uh, no, becoming individual, individual on the land. And then after the Korea War, I believe, it's only after that the Renmin Gongshu started and everybody put their life back to a sort of like uh, a Gongshu, you know, commune, sort of like under commune's umbrella. So everybody starting to um, going to their common land to work. And each day they are getting their token for how many gongfer, you know, and for that day. Mm -hmm. And everybody going to the uh, public uh, uh, hall for, 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 for their <coughs> meal, you know, for the three days meal. Basically that is about only, I think three years probably, and then um, three or four years. And then after that, it's um, they sort of like uh, becoming, you know, individuals still, you know, uh, taking care of their own cooking and their own food, but uh, literally, you know, uh, they are still working on the common lands. So that is a gongshu, you know, basically, you know, that, that is how it works. I believe, obviously at that time I wasn't born yet. So, <laughs> so I wouldn't survive. <laughs> but you read, you read um, books about it, you know, you, you learn that is how it works basically. Right, Li Juan, Li Juan 老师对吧？我说的，就是我说那个公社在，当然是我还没有出生的时候，那个时候就已经，呃，就是，呃，所谓的今天的那个大锅饭，实际上是从那个时候来的，是从那个。哎，对了，欣然，你知道，<笑>你给大伙说说吧，什么是公社？<笑>没有，很简单的说，呃，人民公社实际上是大家说的几个点。很对，从我的历史 research 上看，人民公社实际上它是一个政治的这个生产单位，是从一九五六年开始有苗头，然后一九五八年的大跃进，一直到一九七九年、七六年文化大革命结束，实际上人民公社一直到一九八一年是彻底解体的，就是从我这儿的调研。Okay, so that is is kind of political union in levels started from a very early 1956 that become very formed system national system uh, from the Great Forward 1958 all the way last to uh, the end of the Cultural Revolution. In fact, from the national archives, you can see that end is 1981. So the Renmin Gongshu, this kind of political union, the labor, and it's the end. So that is. I think we talk about Li Jian's book today. <laughs> so I want to give them more time. Thank you, Li Jian, for explaining. Thank you, Xin'an, for explaining. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, here on the concept. Um, I wonder if anyone has any questions for uh, for our translators, for Xin'an, or for Li Jian. 呃、uh, ，你你们也如果中国的朋友也也可以欢迎你们用中文提问。不能不能问问李转老师一个问题呢？可以可以可以，嗯。呃。你得用中文提问。那<笑> <No> , I'm joking <笑>。No, no, no, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll try. Just wait. <笑>不好意思，我的中文比较结结巴巴。呃，你如果听不懂的话，就就说让其他人翻译一下吧。呃，你下个作品是什么？你下个作品要什么时候问世？<笑>或或者，呃，可能更好的问题是，呃，你现在的写作是关于什么？嗯、呃，我的写作。我的写作，嗯，一直都是和我自身的经历和观察、思考有关系。目前还没有涉足小说，就是虚构类的文学。但是，我觉得以后会，嗯，写这样的东西。我今年会出一本书，也是一个短篇的合集
，然后接下来还是想写一些比较长的。嗯，一个长的故事，<笑>谢谢你，谢谢。我期待，谢谢老师，谢谢李娟。期待，非常。没有问题。So Jack asked, uh, um, uh, Li Jun, uh, what her uh, uh, forthcoming works are, and uh, Li Jun said uh, she's uh, probably coming, having another uh, short essay collections coming out, but she's also working on a longer novel. Um, so maybe thinking about uh, working in the field of fiction as well. Uh, anyone? Any other questions? I think there's a couple in the in the chat. Oh, is ah, 不好意思，呃，我刚才没有我没有看啊。Okay, so 谢谢。有 we have a another 呃，倪范倪。Um, so say thanks for organizing this event. 谢谢李娟老师。我是一名文学专业的学生，我叫倪帆，现在在澳大利亚读书，研究生态文学。我一直很想把您的书当成当代的作品介绍给英文学界的读者。不知道能不能在这里分享一下前几两天我写的我读李娟姐文字的想法呢 ？OK， 那那位倪帆同学，您可以啊、uh, unmute yourself and、uh, and share your thoughts。这位倪同学能听到我说吗？啊，好，谢谢老师。啊<笑>，我本来也没想，没好意思，就是说，呃，来占用这个时间来，呃，拿我的。来来说话，不过那就谢谢老师。嗯，其实我是前两天看到这个线上活动的时候，呃，我当时就非常激动，我就写了一些这些评论，因为呃，我当时第一部读呃李娟老师的书其实是《遥远的向日葵地》，我当时读的时候就是嗯、呃，跟之前的几位老师来分享的一样，就是呃又感动，然后又又呃就是就是呃。就是也有眼泪，然后也有很多感动，然后又非常的温暖。这种就是说，呃，对，然后那我就读一下这个吧。嗯，我写李娟有着来自大自然的灵气和人心，她的文字是质朴自然的。她是一个在时间中游牧的赤子，在孤独贫瘠的岁月里，在阿泰勒的角落里，有一双善于发现美的眼睛，而看到那么趣味十足的世界。她的文字是那么熠熠生辉，又动人心弦。嗯，和效仿陶渊明、梭罗的一些作家所不同的是，李娟是一个在大地上游牧的赤子，一个女子。她没有陈胜的想象或文人雅士的一些自鸣得意。她的女性视角是陶渊明的子孙们所看不到的。她写出了一个幽暗、疼痛、热烈和奇迹的属于女性的游牧史。啊、嗯，这是我的一些想法，不知道。对，请谢谢。非常好，非常好，非常好。谢谢。对，我们也非常同意李娟老师的文字是绝对是非常非常的优美，非常的特别的。这是我们也是在这次活动中一直强调的。嗯，所以我也才才为什么我才为什么想要大大大家都来分享一下那些打动你人打动了你心的李娟文字，就是因为这个原因。嗯，我看看还有没有什么问题。哦，有一位。有一位呃朋友说 ，I wonder how Kuma's family and other Kazakh herders in Xinjiang is doing now. 想知道居麻一家，就是 it's it's this is this is a character from, uh from Winter Pasture. 想知道居麻一家和其他哈萨克斯坦居民现在的生活状态。李娟老师能回答一下吗？本书，这本书写于十年前，经历的生活。在十一年前，其实这个我是在我的书的序里面也有提到过。嗯，我写完这本书还没有还还没有出版的时候，也就是离开东牧场第二年，我还见过他们一面。后来我妈离开那个村庄了，我也离开了阿尔泰，再加上后来我换了电话，就失去联系了。嗯。So Li Bian teacher said, "Uh, she said that uh, well, she the like one one year before Winter Pasture was published, she was still in contact with Juma family, and uh, when she started writing it, it was about ten, eleven years ago. So now, unfortunately, uh, after her mom had moved out of the area, they've lost contact with each other. 而且而且我作为我其实是一个很软弱的人。嗯
这段经历对我来说意义深远，但是我出于一些性格以及其他方面的原因，我我也没有再回去寻找过他们一家，整整十年了。有时候想想也非常愧疚，但是不敢面对，<笑>所以主要是我的原因。是是是是 ，due to various factors， she hasn't really to turn back to to look for this family again. She sometimes felt guilty, and she's obviously a very sentimental person. She, um, this this journey with them has had or meant meant like meant a lot to her. 谢谢谢谢李娟老师，好哦。Oh, so 我们在最后 ，Shall we have the last question, uh, Daniel? Uh, because we we've stretched our event actually yeah, by quite a bit of time. But it, really, oh,、uh, thank you so much for everyone here because I I not only only did I enjoy this discussion, I also enjoyed the chat where people were the the audience from China. Are、uh, typing to explain their thoughts、um, to the, our English audience, and that's just a wonderful exchange. Um, I want to say, there, uh, there, our, also, our, Bai, Bai, teacher, want to ask Li Juan, in your already published works, what do you like the most? Which book? So, what's your uh to this is a question to Li Juan. Um, what what what's your what's your favorite um. What's what's your favorite work? So far, 嗯嗯，还真没有特别满意的作品。但是如果要比较的话，我比较喜欢我最近的，嗯，这部作品吧，就是《向日葵地》，因为在我所有的文字里，它是相对写的比较轻松的，<笑>但它也未必是最好的吧。但是，嗯，相、so, 对。So, 李娟老师说，我没有明白你的意思， uh, 请再说一遍好吗？怎么回事？啊<笑>、uh, ，So， 呃、uh, ，李娟老师 answered， 呃、uh, ，she， she's， she's not satisfied with any of her works. She's not hundred percent satisfied with any of her works. But if there's any， um， any one that is her favorite，、uh, it would be this、uh, recent distant sunflower fields. Um， because it's a Uh, written in a quite a relaxed, relaxed tone, which is, I guess, a little different from other works. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone, for coming, and uh, uh, I will send a, send out a book purchase link after the event. 是非常非常感谢李娟老师今天抽出时间来参加我们的活动 And thank you, Xinran. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, Sinovis the Books, Daniel and Ying. Thank you, everyone,、uh, for your contribution today. 谢谢大家，中国的朋友们晚安 ，and 英国的朋友们，呃、uh, ，people in Britain, please enjoy your sunny Saturday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you, Thank you so much, Vivian. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 Bye b